today I'll be discussing a topic surrounding DevOps. Um, it's a buzzword that has taken the industry by storm. So if you work in an industry that delivers software, whether it be in-house or for a client, um, you and your company can reap a great deal of benefits by applying a DevOps culture. Um, so yeah, if you're a developer, front-end, back-end, sysadmin, um, with a network engineer, or you just work with computers in general, stay tuned. is to bridge many gaps that traditional developers and operators have. Um, DevOps is an amazing career pathway for developers and operators. It opens up a lot of doors because it requires you to think outside of the boundaries of traditional devs and ops. Uh, none of these principles I'm going to go through today are textbook principles. They're all just things that I've learned throughout my years um, in DevOps. And so today I'm going to show you a few simple concepts that you can apply to your engineering career um, to make the most out of it. So firstly, let's dive into the problems. Okay, so here we have a traditional development and operations environment, little sketch that I made. So we can see uh, we have Bob, who's a developer. He comes in 9 to 5, he writes Java for a living and um, he compiles on his machine, tests it, happy with it. He checks it into a source repository, which could be Git, uh, what have you. And in this scenario, I'm going to go with the worst case. So let's say this is hosted on a server and the server is deployed like in-house on-prem in a server room somewhere and it is managed by um, your operators or sysadmins. And the sysadmins are basically the lifeblood of the server. They make sure the server is operating, it's patched, all the security policies and things are applied. But to be honest, you can see here that there's a boundary already forming because Bob, um, he needs Git installed and the sysadmins doesn't necessarily know how to operate Git. They just install it and yeah, it runs. And then you have a merge cop. Um, <laughs> a lot of companies have a, have a merge cop. Um, <laughs> It's uh, someone who's basically taking charge of making sure your feature branches gets merged into a production branch. They basically take all the features as code and merges it into a stable branch and really and gets it built and deployed. And yeah, so we can see here we have a build server. So once all the merge conflicts and things are resolved, the merge cop would put it onto the build server and basically get it compiled. Now you can see here is a lot of slow um, like hoops that that developers can and operators can face in this environment um, if gets us down there's no deployments happening there's no builds happening um, yeah the the shop basically closes um, similarly here we have a bunch of admins who look after the build server now they could be the same ones looking after the git um, server and there's a bunch of dependencies that needs to be installed in this in environment in order for builds to work. Now this could be node.net, python, what have you. And more importantly, version numbers have to match. And it's a dependency nightmare because to be honest, only Bob actually truly understands what um, versions and what dependencies needs to be on the build server for the builds to work. So you can see here there's a a recipe for disaster when it comes to communication. Also, in my experience, um, admins don't necessarily get, um, are they're not necessarily able to reproduce the same build server. So, if build server dies or needs to be scaled, um, unless they keep track of it, like an ISO with a provisioning script that's being maintained religiously, uh, there's no real way to um, to produce the same build server all the time um, in a traditional setup. Uh, like this. Similarly now here we have a test server and those same dependencies make their way onto test servers in terms of the run times and the sysadmin now have an extra bunch of servers that they need to cater for. 
and QAs are now dependent on this test server being up and running. So if this test server is down or a build is broken, um, poor Bob has to go through all these loopholes to get things deployed. Now finally on the other side of the fence we have the production environment. Now we have another another bunch of sysadmin um, operators um, looking after the production environment and similarly we have all the dependencies deployed there. Now you can see um, how painful this must be to make sure all these environments match and a lot of the times um, take my hat off to the sysadmins they have to make sure all these servers are the same and um, in terms of dependencies configuration um, server and infrastructure all of these things you you know there's a it's a recipe for disaster to try and keep things the same and make sure it's all ticking along um, especially in an environment where the business needs are growing and we want to start releasing and on a daily basis so the important thing to notice here is the amount of walls that we've created um, and these are could be artificial walls in this case or they could be physical boundaries and um, that you know the, the company and management has implemented just the way the business works but most importantly for you uh, watching this um, you need to notice that it's very difficult to progress your career um, when you're working inside one of these boxes and you're just doing your day-to-day -day and day-to-day -day in day in and out um, and no matter what your role is in this industry um, DevOps is mostly a culture so it's it's um, it's all a mindset um, and it's driven by a few key principles that I'm going to go over here. Ownership is the key driving factor for DevOps because when you, it, it all boils down to when you build something, you write code, you want to be able to build it, test it, deploy it, um, all end-to-end -to, -end to production and be able to get feedback as soon as possible so that you can iterate on it, take it back to the drawing board and then improve and the cycle, the cycle continues. You want to do that because it increases your visibility of um, the, the domain outside of the boundaries that, you, that you're used to in the traditional world that we discussed earlier. And this will allow you to improve your code and give you visibility of um, how your code performs in production. To do this, you're going to have to start talking to people. The similar thing with, with system admins, they need to take ownership of, of all the data and the metrics that they have in production and feed that back to the development team, make monitoring accessible and allow enrich um, monitoring data to be accessible by the developers so that they can improve you know, when they design at design time. This concept of ownership unlocks what I'm going to talk about in principle two, which is collaboration. So let's talk more about the um, second principle of um, collaboration. I, I always recommend that developers should start collaborating more with key stakeholders, um, BAs, um, testers and QAs and um, UX and, and even with the system admins and the operators, people who are actually working in production to understand more about the end to end and um, how their code is actually performing in production. should start asking access to monitoring systems and um, figure out, you know, what, what does your code look like in production in terms of, you know, serialization, CPU cycles, um, method timing, you know, how does your web request, how long does a web request take end to end and what's the customer experience on that. Start getting that feedback. Um, sit with system admins and, and have discussions with them, collaborate with them, understand what the pain points are and start seeing if you can get as much data back from them um, to see how you can optimize uh, performance of your application and just become a better developer and become more of a platform engineer rather than just focusing on just simply writing code. Um, you should try as a developer get access to the monitoring, um, monitoring systems, learn how they work. There's a massive open source ecosystem around monitoring um, that a lot of people don't touch on and they don't dive into it, they don't try it out. Things like Prometheus, Grafana, there's so many open metrics, uh, tracing tools out there, um, service meshes and things where you can actually make the network smarter and start learning more about um, 
how the application is performing uh, when you drop it into a complicated and production environment. Similarly for system admins, I would <clears throat> recommend to start asking questions to the development team um, to, to, to help enrich the metrics that you can get out of production. A lot of the times development can, developers can add stuff to code that allows you to get a little bit more insight into performance metrics. Um, I would also encourage to learn how to code. Um, learning to code is fun, it's easy. There's a lot of tooling available to make the learning process really easy. I would recommend to start um, by trying to build your own website, whether it be a resume website or just a blog. And you can really build an enrich microservice architecture out of um, a really simple website. I love you. Okay, so number three is the tool. Tools is what empowers collaboration and ownership. To increase developer agility and operational efficiency, um, we need to expand our knowledge about our available tools, tools um, that are out there. If you're a developer, I would highly encourage that you don't limit yourself to the number of programming languages that you do. For example, in my case, if I'm porting a legacy workload, like a .NET application, I would port that into like .NET Core because it makes the most sense. If I'm writing a microservice from scratch, I would look at Go or Node.js. Um, similarly, like if I'm looking at big data, I would use Python, which has some good libraries for, for dealing with big data and data science. Um, but that's just my opinion. If you're a sys admin, I would, let's say you're running uh, Redis Cache, Elasticsearch, um, Nginx, HA proxies, and all these complex ecosystem stuff in production, I would highly recommend you look at Docker. Installed on your workstation, you don't need to be running Docker in production um, to reap the great benefits. You could run it on your laptop and simulate an entire production environment on your laptop. Um, with simple docker run commands and to be honest before docker was around and before windows subsystem for linux um, i was a windows user myself and i was limited um, to the like the accessibility of the open source world because a lot of the stuff is linux i couldn't even write, write a simple shell or bash script and it's that when you look at open source stuff you know, you look at like the complicated build docs and, you know, um, all these like C and make compiler scripts and all these things you have to run. And a lot of the time, this is like a, a, a blocking, like a gate for, for developers. It discourages people to try things out. Um, but with Docker, on the other hand, it's a simple Docker file, simple Docker run command. You run the image. Um, you can look at the Docker file to see exactly what contents um, is running in the container, which is something you cannot do with a virtual machine image. It's really hard to unpack a virtual machine image and build it from scratch and reproduce exactly what was given to you. Anyway, so that's enough um, for this for this video. I hope you guys enjoy the content. I hope it was informative. Um, the, I actually have some big plans for where I, where I want to take this channel. I have a project that I want to work on. Um, it involves, you know, front end, back end. It involves HTML, JavaScript, microservice architecture, all the tools we spoke about today. And yeah, I want to take you guys on the journey. And hopefully I can deploy all of this in a con cost effective uh, manner using containers and Kubernetes. So it's basically going to be a poor man's enterprise solution um, and hopefully that'll be there'll be some good stuff in there uh, for you guys so hit a like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you want to see so that i can incorporate it into my journey peace <laughs>